most of us, let me ask a question. How many of us have ever been lied to? How many of us have ever been disrespected? How many of us have ever been neglected? How many of us have ever been abused? How many of us have ever been disappointed? We have a world that can make a laundry list of things that have happened to us that are negative, that affect us in a very negative way. And the heart of a human being is the most sacred thing, the seat of the emotions. The heart of a child is pure as if there was nothing written on this piece of paper. The heart of a child is pure. And if this were the heart of a child, it comes into the world with no stain and no blemish. But as soon as we come into the world, what happens? Lies, disappointment, violation, abuse, disrespect. And over time, we have a defense mechanism that begins to form around the heart to say, you know what? Daddy said he was coming to pick me up last week, and he didn't show up. And he said that when he came, he was going to show up with the G.I. Joe with the Kung Fu group for my birthday. And if he didn't show up, the G.I. Joe didn't show up, my birthday showed up, but Daddy showed didn't show up. And my mama said he wasn't no good. Every time, the child over time hears that. Builds up a defense mechanism so this violation, this lie, doesn't go in the heart. When I'm disrespected over time, I've been called a no down dirty nigga so much, that fine, I'm gonna call myself a nigga. N I G G A. And then I start rapping about it because I'm gonna accept it and turn it around and make it sound like something. It's a defense mechanism that I'm no longer gonna allow you to hurt me in the way you hurt me in the past. And over time, I'm going to do this quickly because we're wrapping up. Many of us build a defense mechanism or wall around our hearts so that nothing can get in the heart and nothing can get out. But when we reach a certain point in life, all of these things that go into the heart, see the heart, the child wanted one thing and had one agreement to give love and receive love. But Anything that comes into the heart that is negative, that child experiences it with. So we have a heart that is heavy with what? And Jacques said, you know, I'm sorry, not Jacques, but um, our sister, I'm sorry, Pat, our cancer survivor, said, I had to learn how to do what? Anybody, not just love, I had to learn how to again. Emotionally, we have to learn how to forgive. Not just forgive or forget, but, you know, I'll wrap it up with this. Jesus said in his prayer, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. That's a mathematical equation. Anybody who studied computer programming? Anybody, anybody in here that studied any kind of computer language? Okay. That that if you think of it in that those terms, that's called a conditional statement. Well, people a lot of times will want us to say it's an if then statement. But in mathematics, if you do this, that will happen. That's a law. If you forgive others, your heavenly father will what? Forgive you. Now the problem I got is not the people who did this to me, because they did and all. They went about their business and ain't thinking about me no more. My problem is the fact that I still have the memory and the hatred and the reflection of all this stuff that happened to me in my heart. And when I get up in the morning, instead of thinking about God and his word, I'm thinking about what somebody did to me. And this reflection in my heart is what's causing me problems and what has me locked up. And so Jesus said, well, you know, I got the power to save you to let you off the hook. But if I'm going to do that, then you have to at least give to me, you being, what you're asking me to give to you. So forgive others, and you will be forgiven because you got somebody else on your heart. And as soon as you let that person, as soon as you let mama and daddy and your uncle off the hook, 
I'll let you off. But you got to at least be willing to do for another human being what you asking me to do for you. I didn't say love your brother as yourself. So, if I forgive men, see forgiveness, to forgive is to give someone a gift before they deserve it. To forgive someone is to give someone a gift. Now, excuse my hand, right? I'm trying to write fast. Mm -hmm. To give someone a gift before they deserve it. Because one of the chief attributes of God is beneficence. And beneficence means he who set things in your path that you would need. He provided for you. He gave you water and shelter and food and everything that we needed. And we didn't deserve it. We don't do nothing for it. And that attribute is in you. So God says, if you want me to give to you, then you give it to somebody else because you don't deserve it and he don't either. But I'm willing to give it to both of you, but show me that you at least follow me a little bit. Show me that you're willing to do for somebody else what you're asking for me. Because if you won't do it for somebody else, then obviously you don't. So, if we would forgive him, 